Janis Joplin's strong and distinctive voice took her straight to the top. She was even one of the 32 performers at the original Woodstock in 1969 after only performing professionally two years prior. It's been 50 years since her death, and she left her fans a legacy of music, concert footages, interviews, and lots of photos. Welcome to the House of Nostalgia, and if you like this content, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to give us a like. Janis Joplin was born in Port Arthur, Texas on January the 19th, 1943 to a conservative church-going family. As a teen, she started hanging out with a group of outsiders, and through them, she was introduced to the blues. Now, some of her favorite blues female artists was Betsy Smith, Ma Rainey, and Big Mama Thornton. During her high school years is when she started singing the blues. Her love for this genre of music didn't seem to sit too well with her other classmates. You see, segregation was still in full effect and the blues was considered black music. Janis Joplin wasn't the first white person to sing and love the blues, but as a white female blues performer, she most definitely kicked those doors wide open. After graduating from high school, Janice recorded her first song, What Good Can Drinking Do?, which was recorded in 1962. Janice hitchhiked to San Francisco with Chet Helms in 1963. Now, Chet Helms eventually became one of the Bay Area's famous and successful concert promoter, and he also managed Big Brother and the Holding Company for a while. A year later, Janice met up with Uma Kakonin, who became the guitarist for Jefferson Airplane. They became good friends and ended up recording songs together that were released after her death. Janice was developing a serious drug and alcohol addiction to the point where it was becoming noticeable. This was around the time when she was just starting to make a mark as a blues singer. Her friends financially helped her return to her hometown where she decided to get help with her addiction. She did good, she really did. She tried to live her life as being a singer without the drug use. She even attended Lamar University for a while. In 1966, Janice returned to San Francisco and became the lead singer for Big Brother and the Holding Company. They were one of the hottest psychedelic and experimental bands out at the time. She got this job through Chet Helms, who she hitchhiked with from Texas to San Francisco. He was their manager. This union between her and the band wasn't a complete match at first. She had a blues folk sound and they were more of an experimental band at the time. This was during the time when being a hippie was in and from watching different concerts of that era, their music to me was like what was going on in these kids' head at the time with the drugs and alcohol. It was something about those electric guitars that really affected the musicians as well as the listeners. If anybody's seen the Monkees movie called Head that came out in the late 60s, now they were a real band that had a successful television show in the 60s. I watched their movie Head for the first time in the 90s and that movie didn't do much for the Monkees reputation but it represented the times. It was just like putting a movie to the music that was out. So Big Brother and Janice, they had to bring their sounds together. The band were making their rounds, traveling, performing, and recording songs for their upcoming album, which was named after them, Big Brother and The Holding Company. And this was in 1967. After the success of their performance, at the Monterey Pop Festival, they were asked to perform again the following day. 
Their album charted at number 60 on Billboard and stayed on the charts for 60 weeks. Now, it's interesting to know that this accomplishment was done through hard work, getting out there on the road, appearing on radio stations. Now, you have the help of social media. If an artist today appears on the radio and you were at work, you can see the interview as well as hear it as much as you like. But back then, it was a one and done. Maybe somebody would tell you about it. Cheap Thrills was released a year later. It went to number one and stayed at the top of the charts for eight consecutive weeks. Some of the standout songs on this album was Summertime, Peace of My Heart, and her cover version of Big Mama Thornton's hit, Ball and Chain. As far as music, this union couldn't do no wrong, but their private lives were very complicated. Allegedly, it was a lot of drugs being used between Janice and the band. And as we know by now, it was times that Janice tried to quit. But the late 60s music scene was parallel with drug use. It was everywhere. It was no way she could escape it in that environment. This union between Big Brother and Janice wasn't long, just a little over two years, but they accomplished a lot together, and Janice ended up walking away right after the release of Cheap Thrills. Janice was trying to take her career in a different direction by wanting to form a soul band, and that's what she did by recording blues and soul music for her upcoming album. I got them old Cosmic Blues again, Mama, with her new band called the Cosmic Blues Band. She actually assembled a second band called the Full Tilt Boogie Band directly after the Cosmic Blues Band. This album was recorded in 1969 and wasn't released until after the legendary Woodstock performance. The album didn't receive rave reviews with critics, but that's usually what happens when you start recording the music that you love instead of the same sound that everyone is used to. Janice recorded her second album, Pearl, but unfortunately did not live to see its release. She passed away October the 4th, 1970, from an accidental drug overdose. The album Pearl was released in 1971 and became her biggest selling album. Janice was able to meet one of her idols, Big Mama Thornton, and she asked Thornton to open the show for her on the road. And one thing that Thornton said, and I quote, that girl feels just like I do, end quote, while complimenting Janice's version of Ball and Chain. Now Janice's version of this song to me was powerful and sad. If any person ever listened to this song with any form of addiction, not just drugs, you feel trapped. If not, you feel something. Janice made television appearances in her short career. She sang psychedelic, folk, and rock music. But in her heart, she loved the blues and soul music. It was something about these two genres of music that she related to. That's why I featured her as a blues artist. I would love to thank you guys for watching this video on Miss Janice Joplin.